It's the 1970s and you're sitting in front of one of these bad boys. Your goal here is to write a program on this typewriter which will then be punched into the paper tape on the left and then fed into a shiny computer in order to generate your desired output. But the question is how do you write a program so that you don't spend a lot of time going back and forth and using all your paper tape. So you come up with an efficient approach which involves testing a bunch of inputs and their outputs and then writing the program for it. This not only reduces the amount of adjustments you have to make, but also you finish the program much quicker. Excited about this approach, you tell your peers and they say, congratulations dummy, we've been doing this for years. TDD stands for Test Driven Development. Although the term was popularized by Kent Beck in the early 2000s, the idea of test first development had always been there since a long time. We know that the programmers on the Mercury space capsule made their unit tests, wrote their unit tests in the morning and made them pass in the afternoon, a kind of foreshadowing of test-driven development. That's why Kent Beck calls it a rediscovery. And a little internet search in your favorite browser will tell you that the Mercury space capsule, aka Project Mercury, started in 1958 and concluded in 1963. Fast forward to 2024, which is the age of AI solutions and self-driving cars. The concept of TDD has been long lost in junior developers and nobody knows exactly what TDD is. In this video, I will try my best to give you an understanding of what TDD is, why Ken Beck and Uncle Bob advocate for it, how to apply it, and why you should use it in your projects. Test-driven development is a testing, designing, documenting, and anxiety-reducing technique that revolves around the idea of testing first while building software. It builds on creating an incremental feedback loop which gives you logical insights about the feature you're building. So you learn where you're going wrong when you fail the test, fix the feature based on the learnings from the failed test, and refactor if need be. You keep doing this until you reach the final solution. At this point, you're probably wondering, why tests first? That is no fun. Well, writing tests afterward when the code breaks is much less fun. Even if the code doesn't break, we're just writing tests afterward to fulfill a formality and satisfy ourselves. But what we're really saying is that the code that I wrote is the code that I wrote. More often, the test written afterward does not verify the behavior of the feature at all. TDD has four central parts. You need to make a list of assumptions and requirements for the feature you are about to build. Red means to pick a test from those requirements and fail it intentionally. Green means to pass that test using the minimum required changes. The last part is refactoring that code so that it is clean and the tests still pass. Then write another test and repeat the process until all your requirements from the list are met. The goal of TDD is to make you fall in love with failing tests and never be afraid of their errors. Instead, use the failing test as constructive feedback and implement it in your code to make the test pass. We're going to be building a FizzBus solver using TDD. At this point, if you don't know anything about unit testing, I would recommend opening the video description and watching the beginner tutorial for unit testing first. FizzBus is a small program that takes a number as input and returns it as a string. But the twist is that it returns Fizz if the number is a multiple of 3 and Buzz if it's a multiple of 5. If the number is both a multiple of 3 and 5, then the program should return Fizz fizz buzz. These specifications will now become our requirements for the feature and we will write unit tests for them one by one until all requirements are met. Now go ahead and fire up your favorite editor and create a flutter project. Go to the test directory and create a file called fizzbuzz underscore test dot dot. Once the file is created, write comments based on our assumptions and requirements. Go to the terminal and run flutter test test slash fizzbuzz underscore test dot dot. You ran the first test and it failed. Now you need to consider the failed test feedback and write the solution to make the test pass. In this case, we can see that the error says undefined name main. That means that we need to define a main method in our test file. Keep in mind that you need to do the minimum amount of work to make the test pass. Let's run the test file again and now the test output says that there are no tests. So let's create our first test. 
We will pick a requirement we commented in the test file and then write a test case for it. The first requirement is that the program should return phase when a multiple of 3 is entered. This will become our test case description. The only difference is that we have added the number 3 to the description to make it more clear. When writing the unit test, the first thought that comes to mind is that we need some sort of a class which will be responsible for handling the logic. Let's call it fizzbuzz solver. And we know that the input to our function would be 3. So so let's declare that as well. After that, we need a function that takes input and returns the output. Finally, we can expect the output to be equal to fizz since the input number is a multiple of 3. There is a red line beneath our class which means that this class is not defined. So let's create this class in the lib folder. Once the class is created, come back to the test file and import it. Now we got another error on the solve function which means that this is also not defined. So we will create this function as well. I am doing the minimum amount amount of work because my sole purpose is to pass the test, not to complete the feature. Now we can run the test again and this time the test will fail. It expected the string fizz but got null instead. So let's go to the solve method and do the minimum required work. Now if we rerun the test, the test will pass. At this point you must be shouting, this is the wrong solution. But what you should be thinking about is, what test can I write to prove that this is the wrong solution? Using our previous knowledge, we can deduce that if we write a test for input 5, we can prove that the current solution is wrong. In order to have the solver instance as global, we are going to move it out of the first test's body and into the main function. We will initialize it inside the setup function which will run every time before a test runs. So every test will get a fresh instance of fizzbuzz solver. Now run the test again. The first test will pass but the second test will fail because it expected buzz but actually got fizz. So let's go ahead and modify the solution. I went to the solver file and wrote if input is 3 return fizz otherwise return buzz. Now let's run the test again and this time it should pass. At this point we can go back to the solver class and refactor our code to make it more readable. In the test file, I will add another test case with input 6, which will then fail. I will then refactor the solver to make the test pass. This is one of the rules of TDD, to write specific test cases that will make the code more generic. Let's write another test case, this time 10 as input and expecting buzz as output. Running it on command line will fail the test and then we can refactor the solver to make the solution more generic. Once done, rerun to make sure that the test case is pass. Now I will write a test case with input 15 and expect fizzbuzz as output. Running the test will disprove my current solution and this way I will be forced to write a better solution. So let's go back to the solver and handle the case where input is both a multiple of 3 and 5. After each code change, run the test again to make sure everything works. Let's refactor the modulus code into a new function called is multiple of. It will simply take two integers as input and return true if the number is a multiple. We can reuse this in our code and make our condition statements look neat. 80% of the work is already done and I know that you can do the rest of 20% yourself. I leave the complete solution on my github so if you get stuck you can take a look at that. Now let's come back to the beautiful code we've just created. It. It's safe to say that this is a far better solution than what we would have written without TDD. This technique not only forced us to write the correct solution, but we also applied some software patterns implicitly. TDD not only documented our code, but it also increased our confidence in the code we wrote. With that being said, TDD is a high value skill that can be acquired by working hard and not by only applying it at work. If you take TDD to work, it might be the worst week for you and it will slow down your productivity by at least a multiple of 10. So the next time your manager wants you to use TDD, show them this video. So learn it well, get good at it, know that you're good at it, and then bring it to work. For this purpose, I will leave a link to this amazing website I found for practicing TDD. You already completed the first exercise so it should be no problem getting started. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned from it. For more content like this, please make sure to follow Runtime Snippets.